okay so here's what we do now so we begin by creating a directory to host a test git repository let's just call it test git okay and let's create a file And now that we have created it, let's commit it into git. First line committed. Okay. <coughs> so at this moment, we have created a git repository with a single file, which has just one line in it. Let's take a look at all the objects within the dot git repository, its internal working directory. So there seem to be at least three objects. A better way to look at this would be LR yeah so as we can see now there are three objects created let's take a look at each of them since they are compressed uh, editing them or trying to view them in any text editor wouldn't make much sense so it's simple sedlib compression so we do have quite a few options on the command line one of them would be sedlib inflate so let's take a look at each of them one by one Yep. As you can see, this is the first object which is blob, and this contains the actual data. Since the file we added had a single line, this blob also has the entire contents of the file at this moment, which is this whole line. Let's take a look at the other objects as well. Objects. This is basically a commit object and finally we'll probably have the tree object which is what's left let's take a look at that as well there we go so we have three objects the tree object the third object is still it has some quite a bit of binary data apart from the file name so as you can see this is the file name here and this bit is i'm not sure how we can interpret this looking into get internals we'll be able to figure this out but that's something for another day so yeah let's go ahead and modify the file now mm, yeah second line of the file and let's add it to test file itself if we look at it now yeah we have added another line let's go ahead and commit it into git now so for each commit we create we observe that there are three objects added into the git's internal directory so let's go ahead and do a list prepare a listing of all the objects within it now as you can see there are now six objects three were already existing before we added the second commit uh, yeah so if we go ahead and look at the three new ones we would see that they are all again similarly one commit object one tree object and uh blob which contains the entire file okay let's take a look at them one by one this is the tree object for the second commit This would be the commit object for the second commit. And this would be the blob. If you take a look at this blob, it contains not only the diff, it has the whole file. Though it's compressed, though these git objects are compressed internally, this is not efficient as storing just a diff or rather storing the compressed form of a diff would have been far more efficient in terms of space however this would be quite uh, fast faster as it does it would not have to uh, replay all the objects one by one on top of each other it can just go ahead and fetch the appropriate object at the current moment whenever i do a git log 
okay so yeah so how do i uh, make sure so how or rather how does git make sure that uh, it does not unnecessarily tap space that's where garbage collection comes in let's trigger it manually by calling git gc the moment we do this we expect the internal git directory to change remember that uh, we just saw uh, what six objects which are referred to as loose objects and the pack directory was essentially empty now if we go ahead and do git gc the moment we run the command we can expect all the loose objects to disappear let's go ahead and verify that yes all the loose objects disappeared and we now have something in the pack directory basically we have one pack object and its corresponding index uh, one thing we should have done earlier is check the size of the loose objects i'm sure it would be a lot greater than what this packed object size is yeah so the pack object fits into 8kb uh, there is a way to force git to unpack objects using the git unpack object command but yeah it will not do it in the current directory so we cannot basically force it to unpack object uh, packed object uh, one simple way would be to simply just create another dummy directory dummy git repository and try to unpack this packed object since it does not exist in the new repository it will allow us to do that so let's do that test git clone and we say git init and we go ahead and say git unpack objects and pass it the path to the pack okay what do we have here ah, we need to pass the file to it yep and if we do a ls minus lr yeah we should see all the objects in the test git clone repository let's see the size yep so the total size is 32k whereas test git is only 8k so there we go so what's interesting is git by default will not store the diff of the files it will instead store each individual version of the file that is created separately and it stores the compressed version of the file for minor reasons just to save some amount of disk space but though it's not it's not going to be uh, quite slow when it tries to fetch these adlib compressed files and when we run the garbage cl cl collector git gc then we end up triggering the diff generation or the delta generation subroutines within git that will go ahead and identify only the differences between uh, several of these loose objects and it will store the coldest object and then only the delta identified between each of those objects and the subsequent ones subsequent objects so that way it kind of ends up saving a lot of space in addition to compression as it saves just the diff in this case it's quite a bit it's almost three fourths of the object sizes so that's all the way down from 32 kb to 8 kb that's almost 75 percent here okay that's pretty much what we have here